Hey everybody, welcome back to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel in this timeout, we're gonna take a look at yet another piece of hardware, 500 series hardware by Wes Audio. This is the Hyperion EQ, stereo EQ, full analog, digitally controlled. We're gonna talk about it and listen to it here in Studio One and you can check it out for yourself with the links in the description box below. But before we get to that, if you like what you see in this video, hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification bell. Also, if this is your first time here, I want you to go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. I want to give you a free mixing course worth 50 bucks. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I have something else for you absolutely free. So make sure we keep watching. Now, before we listen to the Hyperion EQ by uh, Wes Audio, I want to make sure that we... Um, Thank our good buddies over at Sweetwater. Sweetwater has been able to uh, sponsor this video to help me bring this review to you. So I want to make sure that I say thank you to them. They're great people. If you have, if you're in the market for new studio gear, click the link in the description box below. Head on out to Sweetwater and check them out today. In full disclosure, that is an affiliate link. So when you purchase something using that link, whether it's Wes Audio Gear or anything else at Sweetwater.com, you're helping support what I do here at Home Recording Made Easy, and I want to thank you in advance. So. Thank Thank you so much for that. And thank you to our friends at Sweetwater. So let's jump in here now to Studio One to take a look at this Hyperion EQ. So if you have not seen my other video reviews on the rest of the West Audio hardware line, make sure you click the links in the description box and go check them out. So what's great about West Audio? Well, West Audio's a couple of good things that are really cool about them. Number one, as you can see on the screen, you'll see uh, an image come up, uh, if you haven't already, of the actual hardware. It's a 500 series stereo EQ in a 500 series chassis. So it's a completely analog EQ, stereo EQ, but it is digitally controlled by the plugin that you see on the screen. And you may say, well, what does that mean exactly? Analog, digitally controlled, I don't get it. Well, what that means is the audio path is completely analog. It's an analog EQ, but it's all only controlled. All the parameters are controlled by this plugin. And what that means for you is that you can go between one session, open up one session, uh, to another. You can work with the Hyperion EQ in any one of your sessions and it saves all the settings just like a plugin does. So there's no more writing down settings, taking photographs of your hardware. So when you go from one session to another, you have to manually recall and set up all your hardware. All the West Audio stuff, it's done digitally and that's a game changer and that's why I love them. Plus their hardware sounds fan. Fantastic. So a couple of other unique features. As you'll see, as I touch the actual hardware, these are touch sensitive uh, switches here. So you touch sensitive and you'll see that they'll light up when I touch them. And they not only light up on the hardware, but you'll see the plug-in on the screen reacts to it. Same as if I take one of the knobs on the, um, on the plug-in, like say this one in the top middle section, and I turn it up, you'll see that the hardware moves as well. You'll see the LED lights turning on the hardware. See that? You'll see all of that as well. Really cool, right? So that's really cool. So you can either grab the hardware and you can, if you want that tactile feeling, you want to adjust the hardware by hand, you can do that. Or you could do the plug-in, or you could do a combination of both. And like I said, if you wherever you set this EQ, if you close this session down, open up a new session, and if you have a, a instance of the Hyperion in that second session, whatever settings were left there, when you closed it, it saves it, it completely recalls it just like any other plug-in would. So let's walk through the interface of this plugin slash the hardware and let me show you what we have here. Okay, so up here in the top left hand corner, we have our input and output meters and next to that we have our output knob here. So I can turn that and again, you'll see the hardware, you'll see the lights and the LEDs light up here. I'm gonna control this all from the plugin as opposed to reaching out and touching it because then the camera's gonna focus on my hand and not focus on the hardware. So I'm gonna do it all from the plugin, but you can do either or. Um, and then in the middle here, we have our uh, high shelf filter. We have um, all the way from 2K all the way up to 25K. And you can see as I'm moving, this, uh, uh, moving the dials here on the plugin, you can see the graphic display in the bottom which we'll get to in a second changes along with it. And then we have plus or minus 15 dB, okay? And on the high filters, it can be a shelf or a bell, right? So it could be a bell curve or a shelf, which is really cool. In the center here in our high mids, we have a variable Q, so it's fully parametric. And we're going from, where are we going from? 600 all the way up to 8K here in the center. And again, we have plus or minus 15 dB, and we can adjust the Q value here as well if we want to. 
okay? And you can just bypass the turn it on and off by clicking this button. The other thing you can do, I'll just show you this here quickly, I could bypass it by clicking the button here, the high, the high mid, or I can actually touch it on the EQ and I can just bypass uh, right here by pressing in the button. Hopefully my finger is not being in focus, but you can see on the hardware, as I'm pushing in the knob on the hardware, it'll bypass it as well. So that's how you do it if you wanna do it on the hardware. Um, down here we have our low mids, again, variable Q from 200 hertz to 2.5K. 2, 2 uh, and again, we could bypass it with the switch, we're on the hardware. And then down at the bottom here, we have our low frequencies, which are just like our high frequencies where we can go from, where are we going from? From 30 hertz all the way up to 350. And we can make it a bell or a shelf, just like on the high frequencies. We also here on the far left, we have a low cut filter. So we could turn that on here with the switch on the light and we can have a low cut high pass filter here as well. And we can also change it from a soft slope here. You can see the slope changes when I hit the soft button to a more a steep roll off, depending on what you wanna do. And then you can turn it off there as well. So everything that I showed you on the left is exactly the same on the right because it's a stereo EQ, as I said, great for bus work, for master buses, awesome. Now what we have along the bottom here, in the bottom left-hand corner, we have this little switch here. You'll see it on the hardware. It may not be in focus. I'm not sure if the camera will pick up on it. It may be a little blurry, but here on the plug-in, you'll see this little button. It says THD. That's total harmonic distortion. All of the West Audio modules have this, and this is what really kind of sets it apart. It adds a great musical saturation, and we have two settings. We have a mid, a high, and you can hear a little popping and off. So you can turn off the total harmonic distortion or you can have just a, you know, a slight amount, medium and then high. I always usually keep it on the medium, uh, on EQs and high on the compressors because it's really nice as you use different pieces of Wes Audio hardware, and you kind of spread it around your mix to have that extra saturation is really great. It's really musical and we will demonstrate that. Also on the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a gain switch that we have either 5 dB or 15 dB of headroom. So remember I said earlier, everything was plus or minus 15 dB here, right? If I'm on the 5 dB switch, everything is plus or minus five. Oops, excuse me, let me switch the gain switch, sorry about that. So now we're plus or minus five dB, okay? So you can see that on the display, even though it looks like, so we can go plus or minus five, or we can have it in 15 dB just by switching the gain switch there. We'll stick with five dB, because typically I'm not gonna boost something 15 dB, okay? So that is the walkthrough, and again, everything that I've done here with the knobs, or if I turn physically, you again, you can see it in the graphic display, which is really good, so you get a nice visual representation of what's going on. You can run this in stereo, or you can run this in dual or mid-side mode as well. So let's listen to this quickly on some drums. So let me show you what I have for routing here. So I have this on a drum bus here, and the way this is being set up right now, I'm also uh, uh, using Pipeline XT, the Studio One um, plugin that allows us to integrate hardware into our DAW really simply with this simple interface. Every DAW will have something similar. Now, the first uh, uh, thing that I have in line before this EQ is I'm running the Wes Audio Dion bus compressor. It's an SS SSL. SSL, excuse me, style bus compressor. You can click the link in the description box. You can go check out the video for that. So we're gonna run a couple of dB of compression on this. And then right after that, we have another instance of Pipeline XT, right? And we're running then after that, the Hyperion EQ. Here we go. So uh, one other thing I failed to mention that what you see on the hardware you don't see on the plugin here is you'll see down here in the, in the, in the bottom here, I'll try to point to it. Hopefully it won't go out of focus, this little uh, USB port. So the little micro USB port, the way Wes Audio um, hardware works is these 500 series, these 500 series modules, is if you're using them in a Wes Audio 500 series rack, which I happen to be using, I'm using the Wes Audio Titan, all of the 500 series modules are plugged into the chassis, and then on the back of the chassis, they have one USB cable that goes to my computer. And I only need one USB cable is what digitally, which is the connection that digitally controls the plug-in interface to the hardware. You need to connect it with a USB cable. If you're using several Wes Audio 500 series modules, like the Dion compressor, the EQ, maybe the Mimus compressor, if you plug it into a Wes Audio rack, then you only have to use that one USB cable to your computer. However, if you want to use the Hyperion or the Dion or any of their other 500 series modules, 
and you already have a 500 series rack, say like an API or a Neve rack, and you already have some other pieces of gear that you like, you can simply use the Wes Audio 500 series module in any 500 series rack. But in order to digitally control it, you would use this micro USB port that's on the front of the hardware and that would go to your computer. So if you only have this one piece or maybe two pieces, you'd have to have one micro USB to regular USB, typically USB-A to your computer. So if you had two pieces of Wes Audio gear and you weren't using a 500 series rack by Wes Audio, you would need two USB cables. If you're gonna have more than two, I would suggest that you get a Wes Audio rack because then you can save a bunch of USB ports on your computer and you can, you can control everything with one USB cable. So that's on, uh, on there as well. And then also too on the hardware, you'll see we have a bypass switch here as well, which we could just bypass on the plugin like you normally would, but here's a bypass switch, a hardware bypass as well. Okay, so. Let's listen to this on some drums. So here's a little drum part that we have here. Okay. So let's show you what the low cut filter is doing here. So that's completely off. Okay. And again, you can change the slope of it if you'd like. Here is our low frequencies. You can also just grab the point on the screen and you can drag it up too. If you wanna use it like a typical plug-in EQ, you don't have to turn the knobs on the hardware or the software. You could just grab it here and you'll see the F means frequency, the gain means how much gain. So in this particular case, we're boosted to 105 Hertz, 1.75 dB. It's around 60 Hertz. 3 dB, okay. That's before. So it's a nice little bit of thickness to that kick drum and it doesn't get muddy. What I love about this EQ and hardware EQs in general is they don't get muddy on the bottom end and they don't get too brittle on the top end, which we'll demonstrate in a second. So there's like a 3 dB boost at 60 Hertz. Now again, um, we don't have a variable Q here, but we can make this um, a shelf or a bell curve, depending on how we wanna do it. We could turn it on and off just by doing that. Let's go to that mid range and try to get rid of some of the boxiness that we would typically get in a, in, in, in a drum bus, right? Because all these drums, none of it is processed, no EQ, no compression. there and we can turn down and then here we can widen the cue a little right we could bypass it like that Okay, we added a little boost here at about 5K, about 2 dB, okay? So we have three different cuts here. If I take away the plugging, you'll hear what it's doing. It's before. Okay. Okay, now you may say that sounds great. It really sounds good. I mean, a plugin can do that as well. Although this is kind of a mastering grade type of an EQ where it's more subtle and it's more musical, but nevertheless, what else? What? So what? It's an EQ, Dave, big deal. Well, what really makes this a little bit more special is this whole thing with the saturation and total harmonic distortion. So let me add some of that and you could hear what it kind of does. So right now it's off. Listen to the snare drum in particular. And that's off. You can 
turn down the output, it gets a little bit. Now I'll bypass the whole plugin. Okay, so the saturation really makes a big difference in the hardware. That analog saturation or total harmonic distortion is really, to me, what kind of sets this apart. Yes, it sounds nice and smooth. It sounds uh, very, very musical. It's not brittle. It's not muddy. It just sounds good, which is typical with hardware EQs. Um, but the addition to having the saturation built in, that's really, really great. And when you combine that with like in this particular case, we're combining with the diode compressor, the SSL bus compressor, and we're adding some saturation there as well. And the two combinations really make uh, the whole drum bus kind of come to life, which is really, really cool. Okay, so again, let's let's once again, let's, uh, let's bypass the plugin. We'll take away the total harmonic distortion. You can hear the overall effect. That's before, after. I'll take away the total harmonic distortion. That's before. That's the medium setting. And that's the high setting. just sounds great. Sounds really, really warm. Sounds big and fat. It's again, not brittle, not muddy. Now you say, okay, that's great, but it's on drums. What if we put it on the, what if we put it on the mix bus? This, this mix, this, this session doesn't have a single plugin on it. It's not even really well balanced, but let's throw it on a mix bus and we put all the instrumentation through it. How does the EQ sound? Okay. That's not good idea. So because I only have one of these units, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bypass it here in the, uh, in the drum bus here, we're gonna add it to our master bus. I'll show you how to do that. So again, we're down here, we gotta put a, a, an instance of Pipeline by Studio One here, Pipeline XT. That's the first plugin we need to put on. So we can come down here and grab it. And again, every DAW will do something similar. It's a stereo unit, so we're gonna use a stereo version of the dio, of the, excuse me, of the Hyperion. And we have all my inputs and outputs set up uh, so we send in our send and our return. And again, I have a video that shows you how to do that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna, we're gonna sync it up so it offsets the, the round trip in and out of the interface. So it, it, it sets off the, the latency, so there's no latency. It, 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 uh, it um, moves it a sample the way it should so you won't hear any phasey or any latency stuff. That's the other good thing about having this, like the Pipeline XT here is that it automatically will fix any latency issues that you would have from the time that the audio goes out of your interface through the hardware and back in. Again, there's other videos on that. So we set up Pipeline XT first, and then once we do that, we come down to our Wes Audio folder, and we'll grab it just like we would any other plugin. Here is the Hyperion. So now keep in mind, again, I only have one physical hardware unit, so you can only use this in one on one of my tracks, on one of my buses, right? If you wanted to use it on the drum bus and the master bus, you'd have to have two of these units, right? That's just makes sense. So let's try it on this. So before we do that, let's just go ahead and let's just unmute everything here, all the instruments, and let's just kind of, let's just listen to what we have and make sure we have a halfway decent balance here. enough again it's not mixed okay so let's uh let's bring this up and let's uh let's take a listen to this now that what we also have to do is i gotta uh have to activate it here make sure we turn it on in the slot oops sorry about that come on now oh i have to deactivate it right so you have to deactivate it and i'm gonna remove it just completely remove it from there uh open this up i'm gonna activate it so once you put it in, you come down here to where this arrow is and you say, because it, it, it's plugged into, it's physically plugged into the slot three, four on my chassis. So I hit three, four, and now it connects it. And you'll see the LEDs.
let's just turn on the total harmonic distortion with no EQ at all on the master bus just to see what it does. <laughs> that saturation it sounds gorgeous okay now we're gonna do a little bit of eq here so again if you don't want to twist the knobs if you don't want to reach out and touch the knobs and you don't want to fiddle with the knobs here on the plugging you can just work like this like you would any other eq right On 6k i'm getting a pretty good shelf here and you can tell now this is on 5 db gain if i go to 15 db okay and now i look at this <clears throat> well it'll allow us to give us more headroom here So I'm exaggerating some of the settings. I'm over EQing it so you could hear how the low end doesn't get muddy and the top end doesn't get really brittle. It's just very, very musical. I mean, they, they picked a lot of good uh, frequency. You know, there's a lot of good frequency points here. And the fact that it's all analog, and again, I think I failed to mention there's 15 VCAs per channel inside of this thing. So, I mean, it really just sounds musical and warm and fat. And it, when you use the saturation, and I'm using it here in a very light way, I think on the high setting on the master bus is a little bit too crunchy, but it's there if you want it. But on the medium setting, sounds wonderful a lot of flexibility i tend to use this on my master bus is where i tend to use it although as i showed you earlier you can use it on a drum bus you can use it anyway you can use it in a in, a, in kind of a, a dual mono mode if you wanted to use uh, the left channel on one on one track and the right on another you can do that as well so there's a lot of flexibility here and it sounds really really great I, I would encourage you that if you're in the market for a hardware eq to give this one a look i think it's really great and again to me the biggest benefit of the wes audio gear in general is the fact that it's 100 percent analog but 100 percent digitally controlled Okay, we didn't even talk about the fact that you could set up and save presets as well, unlimited presets. So as you move between one session or another, you have your fully analog signal path and you never once have to write down settings and take photographs of your hardware again. That's what's great about the whole West Audio line. And I have all of their hardware in the studio. And again, all the links are in the description box if you want to check out the other reviews. So I would encourage you to take a look at this. If you're going to go out and buy yourself a hardware EQ, 
before you jump into some of the more, you know, more well-known, if you will, popular brands that you hear of, you know, all the other brand names that are great, give this one a look. I think you really enjoy it. And again, for the recallability uh, aspect of it, I think is fantastic. So again, all the links will be in the description box below. Make sure you check them all out. And again, those are my affiliate links. So I want to thank you in advance for doing that. Let me know in the comments below, do you use hardware in your a home studio? Do you have a hybrid kind of a setup? Are you thinking about getting into hybrid? What do you think of the Wes Audio stuff in general? Have you heard of them before? Have you used them before? What do you think? I'd love to know below. And then again, thank you so much to my good buddies over at Sweetwater for bringing, helping me bring this review to you today of all the Wes Audio gear and in particular the Hyperion EQ. So thanks for sticking around till the end of the video. As I said earlier, I want to give you something else for free. So if you have not yet gone to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and get your free mixing course, go check that out. And after you watch that mixing course, if you like my style of teaching, if you think that I can really help you on your recording, mixing, and mastering journey, and I know I can, and you want to check out one of my other paid training courses, feel free to do so. And I want to give you a coupon code to get a discount on your course that you want to purchase. I want to give you a 25% discount. Use the coupon code YouTube25. YouTube25 will take 25% off any training course on the website. Again, it's my gift to you just for checking out homerecordingmadeeasy.com and checking out my other training courses. So until the next video, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com, and I will see you guys very soon. Take care, everybody.